A lot of you requested that I go and test the water at Starbucks because it's triple filtered. So let's go see how well it does. When I grabbed the water and ice, here's a couple things I noticed. First, the drinks were not accessible to the public, meaning the workers had to give you your drink. This can be beneficial because contamination from the public access is a real thing. Second, I've never been to Starbucks before, and I guess the workers there are really nice. I did have a great day. Regardless, these cups had to go because they had an open hole on top, which can lead to contamination. I quickly transferred the water and ice to sterile containers for the trip to my lab. Also, because I've never been to Starbucks before, I got myself something too. This dragon fruit juice was pretty good. In the lab, I'm going to put one milliliter of the water and ice on petri dishes. This is a common test in microbiology to determine the approximate quantity of bacteria in the liquid. Now remember, a safe amount of bacteria can be as high as 100 to 500 colony forming units or CFU per milliliter. So we can assume that if we are below 100 CFU, the water can be considered generally safe. So let's go see how much is growing in the Starbucks water. Now some of you are confused about what these time lapses are actually showing. This test estimates how much bacteria was initially in the water. It just takes a couple days to see the bacteria form an actual colony. Each colony is actually made up of millions of bacteria. And here we see approximately 50 colonies, which is well below the 100 to 500 safety mark. Now let's go see what's growing in the ice. So the ice ended up having about 35 colonies, which is also well below the 100 to 500 safety mark. But remember, this is just a quantitative side of testing. You getting a high amount of regular bacteria can have negative side effects. But additionally, you getting a small amount of pathogenic bacteria can also have negative side effects. So let's go ahead and do some more testing to identify these bacteria. So I was fortunate enough to have a company named Acugenics, which is owned by Charles River, reach out suggesting I try out their microbial identification services. And this is a company that specializes in providing these services, especially in clinical and industry settings. So yeah, I decided to test out their services. So I got in my car and drove down to the nearest FedEx. And I sent them those Petri dishes. And here are the results. This cloudy looking colony right here is actually called Acinetobacter bailey or it might be a Cenotobacter soli. Because this was done with Malgitoff, they were able to distinguish if it's one or the other. Next up are these white colonies, and they were identified as Rothia cristinae. And lastly, I had them identify this big yellow colony, and it was identified as Cocuria variens. Now on the water petri dish, I also identified this white colony here because it looked different than the colonies found on the ice petri dish. Additionally, I also identified these yellow colonies. Now this white colony ended up being Peribacillus simplex. And all these yellow colonies were identified as the very popular Staphylococcus aureus. Now each of these bacteria minus the Peribacillus simplex are opportunistic pathogens. However, additionally, these bacteria are commonly found all around you, even on your skin and in your mouth. So while it appears that this Starbucks water has a minor contamination issue, because there's such a small amount of bacteria here, for the normal person, this water would be considered safe.